Sponsored by CuriosityStream. Get access to my streaming video service, Nebula, when you sign up for CuriosityStream at curiositystream.com slash vector. I'm pitting the iPhone 11 up against the Pixel 4 in a camera to camera, video to video shootout. I'm Rene Ritchie and this is Vector. The Pixel 4 can shoot up to 4K video at 30 frames per second. 1080p video at 30, 60, or 120 frames per second, but no slow motion up to 240 frames per second. For that, you need to drop down to 720p. And there are a couple other very obvious omissions here as well. First, there's no 24 frame per second mode, not at any resolution. Now, 24 frames per second isn't science or anything like that, it's just tradition. Back in the day, movie makers found that anything less than 24 frames per second just didn't fool your brain into thinking it was seeing smooth, steady motion. And anything more than that was technologically and financially just too expensive to justify. So because most of us have grown up seeing cinema in 24 frames per second, our brains have come to identify that as looking cinematic. And 30 frames per second, well, more like TV. Even now, even in the age of ultra high frame rates, people still wanna shoot in 24 frames per second to capture that cinematic feel. The way I've always shot this channel, for example, in 24 frames per second, and the Pixel 4 just won't do that. Sure, you can change it in post, but that's an extra step and an interpolation, which is never as good as just capturing it that way to begin with. Now, whether you personally care about that or not, let me know in the comments. Second is the lack of 4K 60 frames per second. Yeah, the exact opposite problem. Videographers want 4K because we either want to post video in 4K or we want to be able to crop and move around and render out in extra crispy 1080p. We also want 60 frames per second for either silky smooth motion or to have extra frames so we can reduce it down in post and have extra silky smooth slow motion B-roll. And the Pixel 4, again, just won't do it. In fact, Google lists 4K last on the Pixel 4 spec page. 1080p first, 720p second, and 4K dead last, which is kind of a wicked obvious way to make it look like the exact opposite of a priority as well. And for the company that also owns YouTube and hosts more 4K 60 frames per second video than anyone else in the world, not being able to generate any of it themselves is just Bizarre. They said stuff like they're still concentrating on 1080p since that's what most people use or that 4K 60 is just too large for the storage. But since the Pixel starts at 799 for 64 gigabytes and goes up to 899 for 128 gigabytes compared to the iPhone 11 that starts at 699 for 64 gigabytes but only goes up to 749 for 128 gigabytes and also has an option for 256 gigabytes for 849, something the Pixel just doesn't offer at any price, that's a problem entirely of Google's own making. Other Android phones, including Samsung, using the same Qualcomm Snapdragon 855 chipset and Universal Flash Storage, or UFS 2.1, don't seem to have any problem doing 4K 60 at all. So it sounds like Google just can't currently get their electronic image stabilization and image fusing HDR algorithms to handle 4K video streams at 60 frames per second, and they won't do it until they can, which will require better silicon, better algorithms, or simply better willingness to get it done. I honestly don't know which, not a clue. The iPhone has been doing 4K 60 frames per second since the 10 in 2017. The 10s in 2018 added interleaved extended dynamic range at 30 frames per second. And now the iPhone 11 in 2019 can do EDR at the full 60 frames per second along with electronic stabilization. Again, that may or may not matter to you, so let me know in the comments. The iPhone 11 can also do 4K at 24 frames per second, but strangely not 1080p or 720p at 24 frames per second. Those are locked to 30 or 60 FPS. Unless you're in low light, in which case they can be set to automatically drop to 24 frames per second for better capture quality. The iPhone 11, like the 10s, can also record stereo audio. Slow motion is 1080p, 120, or 240 frames per second. No 720p slow motion anymore at all though, but all for $100 less than the 64 gigabyte version of the Pixel 4, and $150 less than the 128 gigabyte version. Even the 256 gigabyte iPhone 11 is $50 less than the 128 gigabyte Pixel 4. And if you wanna spend the money or you're a videographer billing it out to clients, you can go all the way up to the iPhone 11 Pro and up to 512 gigabytes for $1,349. Both the Pixel 4 and the iPhone 11 can record in H.264 or H.265 for higher efficiency files, albeit ones older software may not play as nicely with. 
It's also interesting that Google is willing to support H.265 or HEVC for recording when they're not so willing at all to support it for YouTube playback. For example, to allow 4K playback on the Apple TV. Google probably just feels like they have more leverage with YouTube than they do with video editing software. Go figure. Either way, both produce really good video. The iPhone 11 just gives you options Google won't or can't, at least for now. Both Google and Apple made very different choices when it comes to the secondary cameras on the Pixel 4 and iPhone 11. Google opted for a telephoto, which plays to their strengths in computational zoom. Apple opted for an ultra wide angle, which is quote unquote more fun, but also lets you capture not just a more expansive frame, but an entirely different perspective. The 2016 iPhone 7 through the 2018 iPhone XS all had secondary telephoto cameras, just like the Pixel 4 does now. And I like them and still like them a lot. If you have enough light, you can get a really nice natural depth of field right off the camera. I'm really enjoying the ultra wide angle on the iPhone 11 though. Sure. Some people will tell you that you can just sneaker zoom in or out to get closer or wider shots, but you can't, not really. Sometimes there are obstacles or hazards in the way. All times, the different cameras give you different looks. That's why different lenses exist, including and especially on high-end cameras. Which one is the better choice, telephoto or ultra wide angle will come down to personal preference. You can, and both cameras do, especially in low light, computationally emulate telephoto. You can't do that with ultra wide angle because there's just no data for it. So technically the ultra wide angle again, just gives you more options. That includes capture outside frame, which lets Apple use data from the ultra wide to better track and stabilize the wide quick video without having to crop in. For example, having more options is what I really care about. So that's why my favorite here is the iPhone 11 pro, which like many other Android cameras gives you all three wide, telephoto, and ultra wide. So you don't have to choose between them. You just have to choose the right one in the moment. Drop a comment and let me know what options you care about. Neither does night mode for video yet, but both use their image processors to get as much extended dynamic range as possible. Neither of them let you do portrait mode for video. Some other Android phones offer the option, but it's not really ready for prime time yet. And for actual video depth of field, that's where big lenses on dedicated cameras still win. The Pixel 4 front facing camera is 1080p 30 frames per second. The iPhone 11 front facing camera is 4k at 24, 30 or 60 frames per second or 1080p at 30 or 60 frames per second. It can also do slow motion at 1080p 120 frames per second. Yeah, slow fees. In other words, optically at least, the iPhone 11 can shoot higher end video on its front selfie camera than the Pixel 4 can on its main rear camera. Something pointed out with panache by Jonathan Morrison in his Pixel 4 video shot on iPhone 11 selfie cam. Again, they both produce really good video, but stop me if you already know what I'm going to say. Having really good options is better than not having those really good options. Speaking of which, a bunch of you have asked how you can watch these videos, just not on YouTube. I get it. Believe me, it's exactly the reason I helped build Nebula. It's a streaming video platform built by and for independent creators like CGP Grey, Kirkazak, Lindsay Ellis, Polymatter, Thomas Frank, Half as Interesting, Tech Alter, and yours truly. We're building it because we want a place for education creators to try out new content ideas that just might not work on YouTube or for people who simply don't want to watch them on YouTube, including cool new original series like working titles and grand test auto. And because it now comes bundled with curiosity stream, you also get access to thousands of documentaries and series like the real war of thrones season two, the true story of Europe's religious wars and the power games that the families that ruled the continent played to crush their enemies. By signing up, you won't just be helping me out, but the entire educational community as we work together to build a place where you can create content you really want us to create. Just go to curiositystream.com slash vector for unlimited access to the world's top documentaries and nonfiction series. And now Nebula as well. And enter the promo code vector to start your membership completely free for the first 31 days. Thanks curiosity stream. And thanks to all of you for supporting the show. So pixel four versus iPhone 11 video for casual users. They're both great, great color, great stability. At the end of the day though, Apple just offers more good options for video. And that means whether you're just shooting video of your kids or friends or pets and want them as future proof as possible, or if you're a professional and want to shoot, 
post or just edit from 24 frames per second to 60 frames per second, the iPhone 11 is the one to get. At least that's what I think. Now, I'd love to know what you think. So hit like if you do, hit subscribe if you haven't already, plant that bell gizmo so YouTube will actually tell you when the next show goes live, and then hit up the comments and let me know. Thanks for watching, see you next video.